welcome to the Gene Siskel Film Center. Thank you everyone for coming um, and for being so patient. We're delighted to have a room full of young filmmakers here today, young video makers, and um, we're really glad that you could join us. I'm Nicole Palantir and I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator for the European Union Film Festival, which opened on March 5th and is happening through April 1st. Roger Ebert says that we here at the Gene Siskel Film Center are one of only five true cinematechs in the world, three of those being in the United States. We're open to the public seven days a week, and we show over 400 different films each year. Um, we also host over 100 visiting filmmakers. Hello, uh, I'm Nick and I'll be interviewing you today. Uh, what is your name and uh, what do you do here at the Gene Sisko Film Center? Well, um, I'm Nate and uh, I'm just one of the regular 20 hour a week staff here. And this is Nicole. Hi, um, I'm Nicole Palantir and um, I, I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator for the European Union Film Festival, which is happening. It started on March 5th and it runs through April 1st mm -hmm. and it shows uh, films from the 27 European Union nations. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of Gene Sisko Film Center? Yeah. We um, used to be located in the Art Institute building, and then in 1998, we um, got this beautiful new um, building, and we uh, christened it after the critic Gene Siskel, and we've been operating out of there ever since. Uh, we have movies about 360 days a year from, we try to get movies from all over the world. Mm -hmm and we're just dedicated to the serious pursuit of film. Why is this film center named after Gene Siskel? It was named after him because he's one of the most prominent critics of uh, the 20th century, film critics in America and especially in Chicago. And he, um, you know, he cared a lot about film and film in Chicago. I like this picture even more than you. I think it's one of the year's best films. and. The what kind of programs does Gene Sisko Film Center have? In general, um, we have, as she said, several um, international festivals every year. Um, the Iranian Film Festival is one, Asian American. Um, so there's definitely an emphasis on international, but we also run lots of repertory programming, classic films, and in conjunction with the Art Institute, as we are a division of the Art Institute, we, um, we allow teachers to conduct several classes mm -hmm. in our auditoriums and they examine everything from the history of uh, the Hollywood industry itself to lots of uh, thematic series and, um, and then there's also um, sort of cutting edge art films from America as well. Um, this is our smaller theater. It seats 61 people. And um, usually, you know, uh, whenever, well, whenever the center is open to the public, this, the films will be screening simultaneously. So there'll be, you know, a, a, one film in here and then one in our larger theater. This is our larger theater. It seats, what, 187? Is that right? Uh, right around there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. about 187. And um, as you can see up here again, this is where you can see into the booth where the, the films are loaded. And, um, we're gonna be in here today when we when we screen modus operandi. What is the European Film Festival? I'll cover that one. <laughs> um, well, the European Union Film Festival is the largest of the five international festivals that the Gene Siskel Film Center does every year. Um, we're now in our 13th year with the EU Festival, and um, the goal is to show films from all of the EU nations, which right now it's 27 countries that are part of the EU. And as you see around you here, um, we have all of the flags up from the 27 EU nations. This year we have 59 feature films um, from covering all the nations, all 27 nations, and a, a mix of, you know, 
any kind of film you want, really, you know, documentary, uh, like you'll be seeing today, a documentary from Belgium. Um, we have, uh, you know, fiction films and comedies and romantic movies and action thrillers. Pretty much runs the whole gamut. What are some of your favorite films that Gene Siskel Film Center has? Ooh, that's a tough one. I guess we'll both take that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can start. Okay. Um, my favorite things that we've shown since I've been working here um, would be some old films, one by a German director who worked mostly in France named Max Ophels. Uh, we did an entire series of all of his late films, which are some of the masterpieces of French cinema. They're usually set in Vienna. They're very like the, this. Max Ophuls was a pioneer of the moving camera, and he influenced yeah. a lot of later filmmakers. And they're just very lush, beautiful, and emotional movies. And Sergei Parajanov, we also did a series of his films, and he's a Georgian Armenian director. Um, this sort of shows how we like to like dig through the the histories of lots of different national cinemas. There was a Rene retrospective recently where they, uh, one of the films that was shown in that was this film called Je T'aime, Je T'aime, and um, that was just beautiful and amazing. Then there's things like um, we, we had a Jim Henson retrospective, and the Muppet movie is like one of the formative movies of my childhood, and um, to you know get to see it now and on the big screen, that was just really kind of cool, you know? So. Um, so that's kind of the other end of the spectrum, but I, you know, I, I loved that experience as well. And then, you know, of course, recently I've been seeing the EU films, and um, there's a fantastic Spanish film that was the opening night film of the festival called The Dancer and the Thief, and um, it was directed by Trueba, who did um, a movie Belle Epoque, which was um, very well known. But um, yeah, just a very beautiful, strange film. Um, that combined a lot of different kinds of elements that you wouldn't expect. Yeah. Working on the festival, having a sense of the films, and then getting to go see them um, in the theater, it's just such an amazing opportunity to get a little taste of all these different cultures. And so that's kind of my favorite thing right now, is just you know, going and you know, discovering new things that I, I, I didn't know before. There are things when you watch a film from another country, especially a country you haven't been to, there are little things that you, you pick up on, you know, and um, even if you don't understand the language, you hear the rhythm of the language, you read, you know, the subtitles, there's little subtle clues about how people live that aren't even necessarily, you know, the, the topic of what the film is, but you see, you know, what kind of you know, food people are eating and just different stuff and what people talk about mm -hmm. and what's important to them. And then, you know, you can think about that in terms of your own life and your own culture and, you know, make comparisons and contrasts. And I, I really, I really enjoy that. Over here, there's a display of uh, classic Hollywood photographs. Um, a lot of famous screen stars from like the gold, you know, what they call the golden age of, of cinema. This is our box office area, and um, you see Nate here behind the counter. <laughs> this is where you buy your tickets, and um, if you'll notice on the, the marquee here, it says, Welcome After School Matters, Students, um, and the film will be watching at noon, Modus Operandi. Since right now the, the uh, center is closed to the public, um, you guys will be having a special private screening um, our concessions area is, is unfortunately not open right now, but this is where, you know, there's, you can get your snacks and everything for the films. This is a very famous photograph. This is, um, on the left is Gene Siskel, and on the right is Roger Ebert. And um, this is a little bit before your time, but maybe you've, you know, seen mention of at least that uh, there was a famous television program for years um, where Siskel and Ebert would, uh, you know, watch current films and they would rate them by giving them a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So it's kind of a very, you know, well-known um, gesture that they that they adopted. And um, and of course, Gene Siskel on the left, he's the um, the namesake of the Gene Siskel Film Center. If a high school student wanted to become a film director, what what should he or she do? 
make films. Yeah. Make films. <laughs> your friends to help and yeah. Yeah, that's my answer too. <laughs> Just practice, you know. I mean, it's so there. You have so much more technology easily available to you, um, you know, as a high school student now than ever before. You know, video cameras. You can. Well, you guys are in this program here. You know, um, before you know. I mean, when you think about when people really only had access to actual film stock you know it was uh it was a lot more precious it was a lot harder to just you know experiment although people did it you know there was a lot more risk involved mm -hmm. now you i mean you have little video cameras on your cell phones make little bit you know cell phone movies yeah. you know just use all this technology that you have around you just use it you know use it creatively that's that's what i would say put you it know? on youtube yeah. yeah you can even get it out there yeah you can i mean you can become famous you know, with so little effort, really, yeah. you know, more than ever before. Well, thank you for your time, and uh, until next time. Thank you. Thank you. The film we're showing today, um, it is a, a film from Belgium, and it's in French with English subtitles. Modus operandi is a remarkable documentary that examines in detail the mechanics of the Holocaust in one small nation, Belgium, questioning how it was possible for just a handful of Nazis to organize the deportation of 25,000 Belgian Jews, of which only 1,200 survived. Utilizing a wealth of previously unseen film footage, photographs, and documents, director Hugh Leno painstakingly reconstructs Nazi strategies and methods that drew scores of both unwitting and voluntary collaborators into the destructive plan. And as I mentioned, the film is in French with English subtitles. So thank you, enjoy.